Hello and welcome to the video. I want to tell you about my friend, the long line. Even longer than the real than the non-negative real numbers, some, in some special sense. Let me explain the idea of how we make the long line. So let's just start with the idea of just the simple interval 0 to 1, and I'm not including the 1. Don't worry about it too much, it's just to make things kind of work out. So there's our uh, favorite interval. And what I could do is I could take this and I could just take two of them and sort of add them together to get a longer interval. Uh, but this doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Uh, we have to be clear about what we're talking about. So what we're really talking about is I could take the first interval and tag it with a name. So I'm naming, I'm sort of tagging all the points in this interval with the name zero. And then what comes after zero is one. So I could take this interval and tag it with the name one. And then what I mean by adding them together is that I'm taking all of these points and I'm taking all of these points and I'm combining them together into a single set to now get this interval but where you see I've tagged these with zero and tagged these with one. Well, I could take this further, right? Uh, because I could just add three of these intervals together with the tag zero, one, two, or I could add four of them together with the tag zero, one, two, three. Uh, in fact, I could add infinitely many of them together. So let's think about this for a second. So I could have, um, an interval named zero, an interval named one, an interval named two, an interval named three. In fact, I could do that for all the natural numbers, including zero. So now I have an infinity of uh, intervals that I could add together, but then I could have an interval that comes after all of those, and then an interval that comes after that, and an interval that comes after that, and I could do that forever. And then I could have an interval that comes after all of those, and an interval that, uh, and, and so on. In fact, I can get really crazy with this. It's time to break the pen out, and I want to show you how crazy this gets. I want to give you some sense here. So here, I could add an interval between these two, and then I could add an interval between these two, and I could add an interval between these two, and I could keep doing this uh, infinitely, in fact. And you see that this first layer of the spiral has an infinite number of notches on it, and when I say infinity, uh, I kind of mean omega, because that describes the way that these are ordered, um, and so on. So in fact, if I add intervals between all of these uh, omega num number of notches, I would have something kind of like all of the real numbers, you know, from zero and up. So I would have kind of like zero to infinity. Uh, it's kind of comparable to that in the real numbers. But then after all of those, I could add an interval that comes after them all. And then I could add an interval after that, and an interval after that, and I could do that. But here something crazy happens. It's actually the first half spiral has an infinite, no has an, an omega number of notches in it. And then the next quarter spiral has an infinite number of notches, and the next eighth of a spiral has an infinite n number of notches. So in fact, it's sort of like infinity times infinity. This second spiral has an infinity of notches followed by an infinity of notches followed by an infinity of notches followed by an infin infinitely many times. If by infinity I'm talking about sort of like omega. Uh, and I could put intervals between all of those. And then in this third spiral, it's kind of harder to see, but it's not infinity times infinity notches. It's more like infinity times infinity times infinity notches, and I could put all the intervals in those. And then there's a fourth spiral that's sort of like infinity times infinity times infinity times infinity, and then there's a fifth spiral that's like infinity to the fifth power, omega to the fifth power, and then a sixth spiral, and then a seventh spiral, and then an eighth spiral, and then the spirals go down infinitely. 
So this whole thing sort of graphically represents what omega to the omega is. And I could add intervals uh, between all of these notches. So some of you might be thinking, oh, wow, that's the long line. But it's not even close to being long enough to be the long line. You see, going back to here in this crazy list, omega to the omega is right here. The thing is, is that this set is still countably infinite. There is a way to assign every uh, not like that previous picture you saw with all the notches. I could give every single one of those notches a unique natural number name. Now, it might be a little bit tricky to figure out how to do that, but it can be done. Omega to the omega to the omega is even bigger. Epsilon naught would be like omega to the omega to the omega infinitely many times. Epsilon one, I'm not gonna really talk about, and then you could have all the epsilons going down. And in fact, uh, these are all very small. Uh, and some, uh, I could always describe these recursively, right? I could like write a computer program that in some sense represents any of, um, any of these. But omega-1 is what's called the first uncountable ordinal. It, it, it's so far beyond. It has an uncountable number of elements, but they're all neatly ordered within it, with the smallest element being zero. And then each element has a, next, a unique next element, and you go on like that until you have... Uh, until you finally achieve an uncountable number of notches, so to speak. And any, any sooner that you had stopped, you wouldn't have an uncountable number of notches, which in itself is kind of a bizarre thing to think about. Um, but it does make sense, I, I promise. Uh, so we want to... So what we want to do is we actually want to put the... We want um, omega-1 number of copies of these intervals added together, so to speak. And that's the long line. Uh, but we do have to describe what the topology on the long line is. So I decide not to really go over the topology, but I'll describe it really quickly. Uh, so we're gonna take uh, omega one cross zero to one, and we're gonna put the lexicographical ordering on it. And then the topology will just be the order topology. So. We could take as a sub-basis all of the uh, open rays. The long line has a lot of interesting properties, but I'm just going to describe one of them really quickly. So every any two points in the long line are path connected. What do we mean by path connected? Well, uh, let's say I have two points on the long line, X and Y, and here's my long line going through these points, something like this. Uh, if I can find a function that maps the interval 0 to 1 into the long line uh, in such a way that f of 0 gets mapped to x and f of 1 gets mapped to y and f is continuous, then I say that x and y are path connected. So in other words, this is f of 0, this is f of 1, and then, you know, f of 0.5 would be somewhere between, perhaps, and so on. So you have, it, it, but it has to be continuous. So it's kind of like I can draw from x to y, you know, without lifting my pen. Maybe I go backwards sometimes. I don't know why I would want to do that, but I guess I could. And then I eventually make it to y continuously. Um, so that's good. But what happens if I just take this long line and I just add a single point at the end of it? So here's the long line, and I just add one point. This point comes after everything in the long line. And, and is this, and I do this by one point compactification. So is this path connected? Well, no, there is no path from here to here. There is no path from here to here. In fact, there is no path from any point on this, on the long line to this point that we've added 
to the end of it. Which means that this interval 0 to 1, it's just too small to map continuously in such a way that, you know, we start, say, here and end up here at the end. And that is a very long line. That is all. I hope you found it interesting. And if you have any questions, then I can try to answer them, including more technical questions. And uh, yeah, that is all. Thanks for watching and take care.